Welcome or welcome back. My name is Sarah and I am the Woodland Witch. So I am very excited to share today's video with you. It's been a long time coming and it's taken me a long time to edit and compile all of this together in the right way, but it's finally here. If you've been following me for a while, you know that this trip to Ireland was long awaited and so, so important for me and my practice. My practice is heavily influenced by my ancestral ties to Ireland, as well as other regions such as Scotland and England, primarily the places that my family resided in. While DNA-wise, I am more Scottish and English, most of my family was born, raised, and resided in various regions of Ireland and Northern Ireland. As an American Irish practitioner, it has always been very important to me to learn the culture, spend time learning the language, to really understand it and immerse myself in it. And I thought there was no better way to do that than going to Ireland. This trip was a lovely birthday surprise for my husband this past year. He knows how important this trip was for me and my craft. And he set the whole thing up while I was in the bathroom. <laughs> when I came out, he said, we're going to Ireland. I'm so thankful for him and so thankful that I was given this opportunity to visit the homeland of my ancestors to be able to share this part of my craft and my lineage with him as well. I've been contemplating how I wanted to share this video with you all. I didn't want to just be a talking head and tell you about everything I did. I really wanted you to be able to come along with me. So I am going to share footage of everything I did while I was in Ireland. I'm still going to talk a little bit about it afterwards, but I really wanted you all to be able to see what I saw and to be able to experience the magic with me. So without further ado, let's go to Ireland. Thank you. 
my trip to Ireland. It was such an amazing trip. I can't even tell you how incredible it was. And that's part of the reason why it's taken me so long to put this video together. It was because I've still been processing and really just allowing myself to process everything fully and to reminisce and experience it. The way that our trip went, we landed in Dublin and we did one big circle around the entire country. We stayed in five counties, I believe. The first day we were there, we went to Kilkenny, which wasn't really on the itinerary, but when we were getting our rental car, everyone at the rental car place and in the airport was like, you have to go to Kilkenny. We landed at 8 a.m. in Dublin and our first hotel was in Waterford and Kilkenny was kind of on the way, a little bit out of the way, but we couldn't check in till three. So we said, why not? We were very exhausted. We napped in a McDonald's parking lot, which was an experience all on its own. But once we got a little bit of rest, we headed to Kilkenny Castle. That whole town was really just historic and cool. Kilkenny Castle is actually one of the oldest castles that is still functioning in Ireland. So it was really cool to experience the gardens there and see the upkeep that's been done in this castle. It still looks incredible. That's kind of all we did the first day. Like I said, we were very tired. We just kind of checked into our hotel and rested after that. One thing I really enjoyed about this trip was that we had a couple places that we definitely wanted to see, but we didn't really have a set itinerary. It ended up really working out because all of the big things that we really wanted to do, like the Cliffs of Mohair and the Blarney Castle, everything ended up being within an hour's drive of wherever we were staying. And we got to see some really cool sites along the way as well. One of those sites was the Mahon Falls. Mahon Falls was in between Waterford and Limerick, which was our next destination. That was really cool. You could just see sheep everywhere residing on the side of these mountains and on the way we ended up stopping on the side of the road and we found this incredibly massive hawthorn tree 
The tree is associated with protection and the fae and the moor again. So it was really incredible to see this old tree that actually looked like two hawthorn trees and it met at the bottom and it almost twisted and you could see this hole underneath it which was really cool like these two trees just kind of became one and it was huge and if you looked inside of the tree there was actually offerings left there hag stones and holy stones, red thread and charms. And when we got to the falls, it was just incredible. I remember it being freezing cold. It was so cold while we were there. But being at the bottom of these falls and just feeling the mist of the water hit my face was just invigorating. And that was like the first real day we had spent there. And I was like, oh my God, this is already so awesome. On our way to Limerick, we ended up taking a little bit of a detour and stopping in Cork so we could kiss the Blarney Stone. I knew Blarney Castle was something I really wanted to do. There is so much folklore and history surrounding Blarney Castle. Not even just the castle itself, but the grounds. Like the Witch's Stone, which is a stone at the front of Blarney Castle. And it is thought to be where the Witch of Blarney is imprisoned. She is thought to only be imprisoned during the day and likes to make her presence known after dark. There was also ancient Druid stones and I got to kiss the Blarney Stone. Blarney Castle was a really, really cool place. If you ever get the opportunity to go, make sure that you add that to the list. From Cork, we went up to our next hotel, which was in Limerick. Limerick was a really cool city. We didn't spend a whole lot of time there because just an hour west was the Cliffs of Mohair and Bridget's Well. The Cliffs of Mohair was the most incredible thing I've ever seen or experienced in my whole life. It was so inviting and intimidating at the same time. I had seen pictures and videos from my sister-in-law who visited Ireland, but the pictures and even the videos I put in here do not do it justice. We spent the entire day there and I don't think we had planned to do that. I want to say the entire strip is about six miles and we walked the entire thing. It took us about five and a half hours and I was dying by the end of it, but it was so incredibly beautiful. And once you walk far enough, there's really not a lot of people around, which is really cool, but also terrifying. And I remember we hit this spot of really thick grass. and My husband just jumped and laid down in it. And it was more comfortable than any bed I've ever slept in. <laughs> One thing I felt really pulled to do at the top of the Cliffs of Mohair was go barefoot. I don't know why, something about maybe ancestral connection to the land, but I felt the need to take my shoes off and walk around barefoot. And feeling that connection with the earth below my feet and being so grounded in that moment was something I really didn't know that I needed. And it just made me feel really close to my lineage and this land. So like I said, we walked almost the entire length of the cliffs. And at the very end, there was this abandoned watchtower, which was super cool. But if you walk a little bit past that, you can see Hag's Head. Now, Hag's Head is a rock that is in the shape of a woman. And it looks like she is looking out at sea. It was so windy at that end, which was a little scary because it's very steep and very rocky. And I think I inserted a clip, but there are just all of these cairns that have been crafted you see cairns across many different regions of Scotland, Ireland, Britain. Cairns are typically used as markers for burial sites or burial mounds. In Scottish Gaelic, there is a phrase that I will not butcher for you in this video, but it means I'll put a stone on your stone. And it was tradition in these regions that before a clan was to go fight in battle, they would carry a stone from the bottom of the hill to the very top. Each member of the clan would put a stone on top of the cairn, and whoever survived the battle would go back and gather the rocks to be placed on the burial sites of those who did not make it through the battle. You'll see these cairns all throughout Ireland. They are everything from tiny structures to giant megalithic burial sites. And the cairns at the Cliffs of Mohair have been crafted in memory of those who have lost their lives there. So that was something at the cliffs I think was really memorable. After we spent five and a half, six hours at the Cliffs of Mohair, we looked for St. Bridget's Well. Bridget is a saint in Ireland, but she is also known as one of the older goddesses who is a part of the Tua de Danon, also known as the people of the goddess Danu. I have honored and worked with Bridget in my practice for years, and it was so important for me to find this well. We searched for two hours because the map does not match where it actually is, so our directions kept taking us to somewhere completely different. But we finally made it. <laughs> I can't even tell you how incredible it was for me to honor my goddess in one of her sacred spaces. I did not film while I was there. I did not feel like it was appropriate to film there. I did take a quick clip of the sign that is there. 
There is a prayer and a ritual on the sign that you can complete while you were there. There is this big statue erected of her and you can just hear the well in the background. And there was this grotto when you got in. It was a very thin grotto and along the entire side of it were just hundreds and hundreds of photos and statues of people's loved ones, people who have gone there to pray for healing from her. At the very back, there was a little waterfall. That was definitely a really pivotal moment in my craft, and it just made me feel so close to her. Another goddess that I work with in my craft is the Morrigan. She is also a part of the Tua de Danon, and Oe Nagat Cave is thought to be the home of the Morrigan. When we got to this cave, it was pouring rain, my husband went to the entire end, but I'm going to be really honest, it was very overwhelming. Not only was it small, but energetically, I just felt really, really overwhelmed. Not even in a bad way, but I just don't think I have felt something so energetically moving. I just felt really overtaken by it. But I was able to sit and call on her and pray there for some time. And another really cool thing is when you are exiting the cave and you're literally on your hands and knees. You can't stand up for some time and I did not get to the point where you could stand. But as I was crawling out, if you look up right above the entrance exit to the cave, you can see ancient Ogham symbols. And that was super cool too. Being at Bridget's Well and the Oenagat Cave, I really feel like did something incredible for my craft. Being able to have these moments with these two goddesses that I have honored and worked with in my practice for years is just one of the most amazing things that I think will ever happen for my practice. Some folklore about the Oenagat Cave is that it is thought to be the cave to the other world, which is thought to be where the Tuwa de Danan resides. This cave is thought to also be connected to the caves of Keshkorin, which are also passageways to the other world. There is a story of a woman at Oenagat Cave who was trying to tame her unruly calf. In an effort to tame this unruly calf, she reached out to grab its tail. It is thought that this calf dragged this woman into Oenagat Cave. She ran and ran all night. To her surprise, she found herself in the morning emerging from the caves of Keshkorin, which is where these two caves were first connected. And we were able to visit the caves of Keshkorin on our second to last day, it was kind of our last hurrah. It was a brutal climb, but when we got to the top, it, it was stunning. So on our last night in Sligo, I was feeling really sad because I wasn't ready to go home. I knew we had one more day in Wexford, but it's kind of that like Sunday night before school feeling. And I just was, I was feeling kind of sad because things at home and in our personal life were just, had been so rough for so long. We were under contract for a house and that fell through and so many things just seemed to not be working out the way that we had planned or hoped. And I remember feeling so sad and I got on my phone and I was just kind of aimlessly scrolling through Instagram and I came across this page and it was recommended to me, um, someone who actually lives in Ireland. It was a scenic video of the land and this person writes their own poetry to overlay on the videos. So I followed them, I really liked their page. And about an hour later, I get a message from this person. And they said, I had a dream about you. And I've been looking for you. I can't believe you found me. And I was very kind of weirded out at first. Thought it was just going to be a very weird conversation. They said that they had a very vivid dream about me. And they wanted to tell me that they knew things weren't working out, but that everything was going to be okay. And that spirit knows my struggle and they are with me. And I just cried. I literally cried. And I even tried to push for more information. And this person was like, this is exactly what happened. I don't have anything really extravagant to tell you about it, but this is the message that I'm supposed to tell you. They said I didn't know how I was going to find you and I was told that you would find me. And I did. And that was a really reassuring and beautiful moment for me. My final day while I was there, we didn't have anything really major planned. So I worked on my ancestor tree a little bit and was just kind of looking up places that my family had resided in. As I said, they resided in various parts of Ireland, Northern Ireland, Scotland, and England. And to my surprise, I was actually able to find the burial site of my fourth great-grandmother. And that was one of the most surreal moments of the entire trip, being able to locate this burial site and feel that connection ancestrally. I just can't even explain it. 
It was just such a perfectly amazing trip in every way. It did so much for my craft personally, and it made me really feel connected to my craft. Like I said, I was in a really deep lull for some time. It was just such a reassuring trip for me mentally, spiritually, emotionally. It made me feel really, really connected to my family and my ancestors and these deities that I have honored and worked with throughout my practice. All right, everyone, that is my trip to Ireland. Thank you so much for being here and for sharing this journey with me. As you can see, my backdrop is shifting a little bit, and that is because I am moving. This will be my last video in this home, but I'm ready and very excited for some new opportunities moving forward, and I can't wait to take you all with me. As always, thank you all for being here, and I will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.